everyone, and welcome to the White Gold Corp Live Summit hosted by SIX. I'm pleased to introduce the speakers for today. David Minofrio, the CEO, Terry Brace, the VP Exploration, Cam Norton, the Exploration Manager and Geologist. They'll go over the updated MRE, review the 2023 Exploration Program, and after that, we'll be accepting questions. As always, um, as a reminder, you can submit your questions uh, in the chat at any point during the presentation. Uh, and as always, the summit is being recorded and it will be available to watch on six.com afterwards. Without further ado, I'd like to hand things over to you, Dave, so that we can get started. Thank you so much, Maxim. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and uh, provide a, an update or maybe an introduction on White Gold Corp. I'm David D'Onofrio, the CEO and uh, one of the co-founders of the company. For those who uh, may not know, White Gold was founded 2016. It's a partnership between the Power One Capital Group based out of Toronto, which is a boutique mining uh, or boutique investment bank. We do quite a bit in mining and exploration over the last 20 years. And we partnered with renowned uh, prospector Sean Ryan, who is credited for, you know, what, what I'll say is cracking the code of how to make gold discoveries in this area of the Yukon. And you know, it's a tremendous place to work in from all the companies we've been involved with in the last 20 years. And we've been fortunate to have been involved with some very high profile exploration success stories. I really think that this one is a special opportunity and, and really has all the hallmarks of a tremendous uh, exploration company. And I think, you know, further validating the uniqueness and the prospectivity here is that we were able to uh, attract two major mining companies as shareholders very early on in our existence, being Nico Eagle and um, Ken Ross. You know, what, what really, in my view, sets this company apart uh, is just the size of the opportunity and the location where it is. You know, we're, we're really so just so fortunate to have been able to acquire a, a tremendously enormous land package. Our, our, you know, we have over 300,000 hectares of premium exploration ground. Now, this is you know, a package that's been sort of evaluated by Sean Ryan and his team for the last sort of 10 years and so. So we really sort of handpicked it. It's probably 80% of the targets in, in the district. Uh, you know, this is now not kind of noticed and, and the district in the last several years has attracted the attention of many other major mining companies. And you can see here on this map, we now have neighbors, Newmont, uh, which is rapidly permitting the, 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 the coffee discovery, which was one of Sean Ryan's original discoveries as well through, through the process. This is the largest gold mining company in the world. Our neighbor to the south is Western Copper and Gold. They have Rio Tinto and Mitsubishi as a partner there. You see Hecla has, has invested in, in the district and just sort of to the periphery of the area, speaking again to the quality uh, of, of, the, of the territory being Yukon, Canada, B2 Gold is now invested in Snowline and a number of other very significant parties like the Lundin Group and the Firebird Sink. So it, from our perspective, when we look at an opportunity, we look at a few things. One, obviously, what's the geological potential? That's going to be first and foremost. But a very close second really is, you know, where is this? And what's the opportunity that this will eventually become a mine? And so this package, uh, you know, check both of those boxes. Uh, as you may know or may not know, you know, our particular land package is in the Klondike area of the Yukon. So this is from Dawson south about 150 kilometers south and 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 just right where western copper and gold and newmont are, are active and this area was of course made infamous about 125 years ago with the klondike gold rush at, at that time and right through and continuing to operate current day it's still a very active plaster of gold mining camp there's been over 20 million ounces of gold recovered literally right on surface and Remarkably, there has not been any modern day exploration up until about 10 or 15 years ago when Sean Ryan first went there to you know, try and figure out, well, hey, if there's this much gold at surface, there's a good probability of being more in the bedrock. Uh, and you know, you may have the question of why, and so did we. And, and, and interestingly, this area, believe it or not, was never glaciated. So there's very little outcrop, less than 2% of the area has visible outcrop and, and outcrop is the traditional prospecting tool used in Canada, at least for sure. And 
without the outcrop, the typical prospectors, they just threw their tools, their methodology, their know-how really wasn't applicable here. So they went to other great areas like Ontario and Quebec, BC, et cetera. And Sean went there and Sean's a very, he, he's a data analyst by heart and he really, and he wanted to understand how he could best analyze the potential for mineralization. And what he ended up factoring into was soil sampling, uh, methodologies using different pathfinder elements to help identify mineralized systems and through then once he's identified the mineralized systems through these pathfinder elements it's not as easy as just finding gold in the soils uh, he then would go to invest and take the exploration to the further step with with his you know other exploration methodologies which are incredibly unique and, and proprietary we've been able to leverage those over the last 10 years and what they've allowed us to do is very efficiently effectively analyze these opportunities well unsurprisingly he and his approach and in partnership with white gold we've been tremendously successful in identifying very significant amounts of gold in this district and what we really think we have in this company today is a true district in one company and we believe we have the opportunity to sort of build this at, along with the other companies in the area that i mentioned into one of canada's for foremost new gold camps. And if that is the case, basically what white gold represents, it's imagine you can go back in time and basically own 40% of a district in Timmins, like Timmins, or in Valdor, Quebec, or in Nevada. So there are very few opportunities that I'm aware of, at least, where you have that amount of scale and opportunity. And further making that more attractive to us has been you know, the fact that it's in the Yukon, in Canada, which is one of the highest rated mining jurisdictions in the world. And I think, you know, the fact you see almost all major mining companies now invested in the territory and particularly close by to our district and in our district speaks volumes to the potential of the opportunity here. So that's a bit of a background of you know, why we think this is such an exciting opportunity. Um, more importantly, though, is what have we been able to accomplish in the last number of years since we put this company together? And I think, you know, I am tremendously proud of the team that's here, that's involved here. You know, they, they, they've done a remarkable job on many different fronts. When you have a property package this big, it's hard to prioritize where to spend your time, where to spend your dollars. But what we wanted to do and where we sort of focused on uh, at the first five years was really demonstrating that we were able to build critical mass in our flagship property, which is the White Gold property. That property hosts um, several deposits, which have now, since our most recent mineral update a few months ago, is now across a very critical milestone of two, over 2 million ounces. Between all categories, and we'll get into the details here, but in rough numbers, you're looking at approximately 2.1 million ounces over two grams per, around two grams per ton. So that, in terms of its tenor, is is, is a very sort of unique uh, size and high grade asset. To have that in a jurisdiction like Canada, there's very few junior companies that have that. We'll go into this deposit in some more detail, but you'll see there's a very, very high grade core, uh, comes right to surface. We haven't released any um, preliminary economic analysis yet, you know, done our own internal studies, and we're really encouraged by what we think the prospectivity of that deposit is. This deposit remains open in all directions. We found other occurrences of mineralization very close by, and that's been our focus of how we wanted to demonstrate the upside uh, growth potential for this deposit and we were very successful in that in the last number of years and we continue to believe that there's tremendous amount of upside with that property to continue to grow you know, to millions of ounces more so so we'll touch on that and you know that's what i think is sort of the meat and potatoes of, of this company you have a real sizable deposit uh, you can peg a value to that. You know, that's not going anywhere. But what's equally as important, and if not more exciting, and why people like us really get into this game is, you know, what additional new discovery opportunities are there in the district? And over the past several years, we've been able to make several very exciting discoveries. Um, 
And, and I think with this company, you really get the best of both worlds. You're growing ounces on one hand, and you're making these blue sky new discoveries. A couple of our properties have had some really new, exciting new discoveries. There was one on the Vertigo Target a few years ago. Interesting geology there. But probably the most exciting one in the last couple of years on our Betty property. That's right contiguous to uh, Newmont's coffee project, which they're advancing through the permitting process and looking to make some very significant uh, investments in the district, which I think is at that precipice of time when, you know, when does a camp become a camp? It's when there starts to be a mine putting production. People are getting very close to that. Uh, this project, uh, remarkable in, 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 you know, the, only the past few years, you know, we had our initial diamond drill discovery hole. It was 50 plus meters of three and a half grams, basically right from the surface. That is a world-class discovery hole. We've continued to grow that zone laterally um, in the last several years. And this year, you know, we're, we're continuing to looking to continue to grow it as well as look for the feeder source of that gold. So this is a very exciting project we're looking at. And then with the company, you know, with this much land, there's, there's always different things to look at. You know, we can only get to so much of it, uh, you know, at a time. But, you know, down in that same area, which as Sean calls it, elephant country, We've uh, vectored into two large porphyry type targets uh, and with its proximity to, to Western Copper is enormous porphyry down there. And, you know, with the knowledge of porphyries occurring in clusters, we're uh, pretty optimistic of, about the potential there as well. So a tremendous amount of activity that's gone on. <clears throat> we have a, a company that, you know, we're really just scratching the surface of this incredibly geological, what I believe, perspective area. Uh, I think you know, the, really the opportunity is, is unlimited. So we'll, we'll go through some of these projects in a little more detail. You know, we only have an hour here. We'll touch on a, a few of the key ones, open up to questions, and, uh, you know, continue, and I hope you really sort of understand the uniqueness of this of this type of company and then the, and the opportunity at hand. Maybe Terry, you want to get into the... Uh, yeah, thanks, to, thanks, Dave. That was a great, great introduction there. Um, maybe we can go back to the resource slide, Jerry. Uh, there we go. So th this is a summary of our, of our mineral resources. Um, this is the most recent update that we did uh, back in April of this year. Uh, Dr. Jill Arsenal uh, uh, performed this uh, estimate for us. If you look at the map on the right, you can uh, you can see basically with the yellow stars where our deposits are. The golden saddle in the arc, obviously they were, they were the original discoveries by Underworld. Uh, then uh, Ryan Surprise is about two kilometers off to the west. Um, again, that's the main resource we did this year. Um, and the VG deposit, basically it's about 12 kilometers to the north uh, on the north side of the Yukon River. So we included that in the White Gold project this year. Uh, just because of the energies. But if you look at the resource table on the left there, you can see, um, you know, right now we're sitting at about 1.1 million ounces uh, in the indicated category. That's on the left-hand side of the table. Uh, you know, very good grade of 2.23 uh, grams per ton. But if, if you can also see that the lion's share of that, about 1.1 um, is uh, open pit uh, golden saddle. Uh, so, you know, we have a, a you know, a pretty good uh, level of confidence in that resource. Um, uh, this year's uh, estimate, we increased the infer by about 41%. Um, and again, if you look at the, uh, the Ryan surprise, you can see just over 200,000. Again, a good grade at about 1.9 grams per ton uh, open pit. So, you know, uh, all told, uh, I think the inferred is roughly 45% of the resource. The indicated is 55%. Um, so the inferred is, is grading about a gram and a half, uh, just, just the 942,000 uh, 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 ounces there. So anyway, um, that's, uh, you know, the most recent uh, resource estimate. So um, we'll look at a few um, uh, isometric uh, diagrams. Uh, in the Put through to slide eight. Uh, here you can see, you know, the, we got the uh, the arc uh, on the left there, uh, the golden saddle, uh, the uh, the GS West, and then the Ryan surprise, which we, we again we added this year. But you, you can see that basically uh, th there's quite a few open arrows, and there's good reason for that. I mean, most of these uh, zones 
are you know remain open uh, either at depth or long strike uh cam's going to do a, a a little bit of um uh, display there in leapfrog where you'll be able to maybe see that a little more clearly but you know really the focus on our work and previous work's really been on more shallow drilling really none of these zones have been really tested to any great depth so you know we, we still feel there's lots of potential here for expansion uh, next please yeah so here, here's another one um Basically, uh, the one on the left there shows the arc, Golden Saddle, and GS West. Again, you can see, you know, uh, the block diagram. Uh, a lot of this stuff is open. Um, on the on the uh, right hand side, top right, you can see Ryan Surprise and uh, and the VG. So, um, yeah, like you know, we, we have we have a nice resource and lots of room for expansion. I think Cam, are you ready to bring up your leapfrog? Uh, just so we can. Maybe have another look at it in 3D. Okay, I think we're there. You go. There you go. There you, go. you can see my screen. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So just uh, following up on exactly what Terry said here. So. Uh, just what we're looking at right now is we're just in plan view, um, but you can see all the golden soils here um, on the white property. And then within those golden soils, now we can start to see, like, here's our golden saddle deposit. Uh, here's our Ryan Surprise, and then way off to the north, about 10 kilometers, uh, there's our QV deposit, VG deposit up there. So right off the bat, um, you can also see just how strongly correlated the golden soils um, are to our actual deposits. So, um, you know, really shows you know, how well that initial vectoring of an exploration method works for starting to to kind of vector into where our deposits are sitting. Uh, so as Terry is mentioning, um, Golden Saddle and Arc, that's the lion's share of our deposits. So we'll just take a quick look at, at those two deposits right now. Um, just look at where some extra potential is as well. So uh, as Terry mentioned, we're just going to swing underneath and look uh, down below. About uh, over a million ounces just within Golden Saddle and Arc. So uh, we're just looking kind of long section at Golden Saddle. Um, these blocks are all uh, their resource blocks uh, showing the estimated gold grades. So just kind of following up on both Dave and Terry's points there, you can see, you know, really nice grades. This is all um, above one gram per ton material. Uh, so anything orange is above one, red is above two and a half, and anything pink is above five grams per ton. So uh, really continuous, uh, strong grades uh, across Golden Saddle um, and still open a depth. So really, all of this here is a nice plunge of higher grade gold mineralization. You can see the boundary of our drilling is, is right here and, and has not been drill tested at all further along strike. And you can see this higher grade going right on down. So a lot of extra potential just right off the bat on Golden Saddle, just within uh, at depth. And then if you start to rotate around and then you look up towards, uh, as you back towards the Ryan trend, now, if we look now, the golden uh, soils trend through here as well. So in the last drilling that was done, we're over at GS West, uh, really strong gold grades as well. And there's been no drilling past that. You can see this nice golden soil anomaly trending. That's a, another two plus kilometers right along strike, which then merges into our, uh, our Minneapolis Creek uh, target up here with very minimal drilling. So a lot of extra potential on strike. And that's just golden saddle. Uh, so just for fun, we'll do the same thing with our ARC deposit. So ARC uh, deposit resource, the resource currently just sits, you know, on this uh, footprint right here. But if we look at the actual golden soils, you know, it extends all the way down here and then up and around. I'm just going to take off the topography. You can see we just kind of furthering up to that point, you know, has seen some previous testing on this kind of southern extension. But there's just not enough drilling right now to put a resource on it. But you can see all these gold grades in the zone carrying nicely on through, arcing down, uh, down to the south, you know, nicely correlating to this golden soil anomaly. So a lot of potential left remaining just at continuing you know, arc along strike, and and the same thing at depth. We're just going to swing it around and look kind of right down, 
the length of, of these deposits. Same thing. So now we're just looking at the depth potential. Con completely open still at depth for both uh, Arc and Golden Saddle. So a lot of potential there. I mean, that's can that'd be our lion's share of a deposit, a little over a million ounces. But yeah, I think confidently we can really, really look to grow this uh, this resource quickly just in about those two areas alone. Now we're going to swing over to our, this is our Ryan surprise target. So we started drilling this in 2018. And uh, so between 2018 and 2022, we put a resource on Ryan surprise, just over 200,000 ounces sitting on Ryan surprise as well. But again, really nice, uh, kind of hard to show here, but some nice high grade ore shoots as well coming through here. Primarily you can see just how strongly correlated this is to our golden soil. So we've, only tested between those three years. We tested this little footprint here, but continues to be open on strike all the way along this golden soil anomaly and down through here. And then we have Uli's Ridge. So we started testing this in 2021. We've had two years of drilling at Uli's Ridge. Looks like the same mineralization we see at Ryan. So very likely just the continuation of our Ryan's deposit. It just carries on to the south and you can see Right here, the small, relatively small footprint that Orion surprise target takes up in about just over 200,000 ounces in this small area here. And now we can correlate that down to our Uli's Ridge, a much larger uh, footprint geochemically. And we've only just started scratching the surface of Uli's. So I get a lot of room just within our current AS deposit areas to continue to expand. And then now we start looking at our broader Orion's trend you have six kilometers along here. Yeah, and really the most notable untested target to the north is our Minneapolis Creek. Uh, really strong golden soil anomaly. Put a few rat holes in here, but uh, really have not begun to even scratch the surface of this target. And now we're going to cross the Yukon River and we're going to look at our, uh, our VG deposit. So this is our, again, our VG deposit, about uh, 10 kilometers to the north. Uh, geologically, it looks really similar to Arc. Uh, you are not arc to gold saddle, sorry. Um, you can put two pieces of core together and, and very hard press to tell the difference between the two. Uh, nice uh, target for us up here as well. And it's going to turn off the topography. We can take a look at. Um, so here's uh, just as we spin, spin uh, VG around. Again, we're looking at the blocks here, popularly with gold mineralization, but just spinning around, you can see really nice broad grade of uh, gold mineralization. These are all your uh, gold intersections in, in the drill core here. Uh, really broad zones, uh, strongly mineralized with gold, seeing relatively minimal drilling, but uh, again, about uh, over 200,000 ounces of, of gold just in a small little area. So a lot of potential in VG to build a lot of ounces quickly. And, and you can see just as the deepest hole we've drilled, very strong uh, intersection here of gold mineralization and, and no follow-up drilling around it. So lots of room to continue to expand our VG deposit, uh, both along strike and at depth. We've just started really scratching the surface of that deposit as well. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand uh, the floor back to, to Terry. Thanks, Cam, uh, that was good. Um, let's look at the uh, 2023 exploration program. Uh, we'll get some of these other projects that Dave was referring to. Um, Uh, Jerry, there you go. Okay. So, yeah, this is, is basically just a summary slide showing what we did this year. Um, we did uh, three three diamond drill programs, uh, one on the Betty property, uh, again, focused on Betty 4. Um, on the J.P. Ross property, we, we revisited the Vertigo target, um, did some diamond drilling there. That was a, a target that generated a lot of excitement back in 2018 and 2019. Um, the Nolan property, we, we drilled the Cali target. That's a, a target that we had been wanting to drill for the last two or three years and then finally got around to testing that this year. Um, and then the regional program, we did uh, some RAB drilling on a couple of projects, uh, Wolf and Tooney, and did some soil sampling on another couple, uh, IND and QV. 
and IP resistivity uh, surveys on uh, Peddler and Hayes. Uh, those are the porphyry uh, targets that Dave was referring to there a bit earlier near Casino. So let's take a look at Betty Ford first. Um, so this is a series of uh, maps. You, you can kind of see who our neighbors are. Again, Casino is located uh, just about 15 kilometers to the, to the southwest. Uh, coffee is around 40 kilometers to the west, a long strike. Um, you can see the, the, the red line along the southern boundary of the Betty property. Uh, that's the uh, proposed uh, casino road as part of the resource gateway project. So, again, you know, any, any future discoveries we make on the Betty property, I think, in terms of potential development and so on, um, the infrastructure uh, is expected to get uh, obviously a lot, a lot better with these, uh, uh, these road projects. So this is the aeromagnetics, um, uh, the first vertical derivative. And again, you know, the, the key takeaway, I think, from this map is that we're right on strike with the coffee deposit. Um, the Coffee Creek Fault basically is that deep blue line you can kind of, if you look at the red star uh, pointing to Betty Ford, uh, off on the on the right side, uh, we're right on that uh, Coffee Creek Fault, or uh, actually a little splay off off the fault. So, um, you know, really good geology. Casino again is about 15 kilometers away. So, in, in addition to orogenic uh, type gold deposits, which, which we're chasing primarily, there's you know there is uh, potential for porphyries, and epithermal, and those types of uh, deposits as well. Uh, next, please. Okay, so this is a property map. This is a structural interpretation uh, that Dr. Matias Sanchez did for us, um, uh, based mainly on LIDAR and magnetics. But, you know, uh, th there's a number of targets that we've identified. Um, you know, uh, the, the black is right on the Coffee Creek Fault. Uh, you can trace it again uh, from, from Coffee right out to Betty, Betty Ford. Uh, we've got the white, the Ford, and the Grable, uh, again, indicated there by, by the yellow stars. Um, the, the background colors, the magentas and the reds are basically uh, golden soil. So, you know, really good correlation between the, uh, the, the known targets and soil geochemistry. Um, just off to the uh, southeast, we have um, the mascot target, which, which actually includes a number of different uh, targets, the Davis, the Page, the Boot. We did a little bit of drilling, diamond drilling there last year. Uh, that was the first year that had been diamond drilled. Ethos Gold had did some RC drilling here about 10 years ago and came uh, with some interesting results. So, you know, it's a really, it's a large property with uh, lots of good targets really that have seen minimal uh, testing and, and a lot of them no drilling. So, okay. And just to, to add on to that point there, Terry, just to help put this all in context, the Betty property could ostensibly be, uh, you know, its own public company. If you just look at the size, the scale, the amount of work that's been done, you you you, you, know, you couldn't really ask for for much more. You see, there's you know a, a lot of smoke. We have all these soils, um, you know, anomalies that have been identified. The work is just sort of getting underway, and, and there's been one major discovery, and we think we're sort of on the uh, you know cusp of, of potentially making many more at, as the work gets done. And and just you know to that point, another thing to, to maintain in context for the work that's been done through the iterations of these different properties prior to white gold consult consolidate and all you know that's probably in the order of you know north of 100 million dollars for sure probably closer to 120 in today's dollars that's you know probably closer to 200 million dollars so what, what you have here in, in white gold you know just to always sort of you know bear in mind is you have a company that's you know what has it done it, it's accomplished the most difficult thing for any exploration company to do that's make a successful discovery that leads to a mineral resource. Not only has it done that, it's led to a mineral resource over two million ounces at two grams. You know, the odds of that is well north of, uh, you know, or well less than one, one in a thousand. So, so we, we beat the odds geologically and you have the tremendous amount of investment that's been made in the past. And as investors now or prospective investors, I think you know, you, 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 there's a tremendous amount of value you're able to, 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 to sort of leverage off of this is sort of really you know a benefit to us and you know what i really do think is that this is the early days of what's becoming another gold rush here in the yukon particularly this area and that's what's leading all these majors 
to, to come in here. So sorry, Terry, I'll just you know turn it back to you. But I just want to help put it in context here. Don't maybe talk. Yeah, about no, I, I think that's important. Um, I guess another thing to note too is that you know. Uh, again, up until two years ago, there was absolutely no diamond drilling done on this project. And uh, with the Betty Ford, we had did some RAB drilling back in 2000. Terry, I think you've, um, you're on mute there. Oh, uh, everyone okay? Can you hear me now? Yep. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah, so so the rab the rab hole um, uh, from two thousand eighteen hole two had one gram over about fifty meters. Um, but again, you know the, the host unit is a polylithic breccia unit, which we'll show you. And uh, we didn't know from that rab rab drill program that what the real geology was. So uh, the diamond drilling really does give you so much more uh, information on the geology compared to. Uh, and uh, and rab drilling. Um, if you look at the mascot, the lower table there uh, shows some of Ethos's results. Again, some really interesting numbers: uh, 2.6 grams over about 41 meters. Uh, some really high grade material, almost 30 grams over three meters. So, you know, th these are basically you know well defined soil anomalies, um, and uh, certainly you know lots of potential with with minimal um, uh, drilling. So this is a plan map for the Betty Ford target. Uh, the table on the right shows uh, some, some of the drill results that we've had. You can see some nice broad zones of good grade mineralization. And you can also see the shallow depths um, of, of those intersections. So basically every, everything we're seeing here is quite shallow. Um, the gold mineralization, like I said, it's, it's hosted in that polylithic breccia unit which is shown in the pink color in the map on, on the left. And, um, you know, all the mineralization that, that really we, we've encountered so far uh, is probably within the top 70 or 80 meters. Um, it appears to be related to sort of an oxidized transition zone within that breccia. Uh, so this year's drilling, really, we, we had a number of goals. One was uh, we, we do see a lot of porphyry fragments within the breccia. So our working model was that underneath that breccia, there could be a buried mineralized porphyry. So one of our holes was testing that. Um, and then we were also testing for a feeder, a potential feeder structure for the goal that we're seeing at surface. Um, so basically we, we just recently released results for the first two holes. Um, hole 12, uh, had, uh, the deepest gold mineralization actually that we've seen, like I said, that's that's within what we call a sulfide zone, uh, about 1.2 grams over just over eight, eight meters. But again, you can see it's occurring down around 165 to 175 uh, meters. Uh, the whole 13, uh, which was, you know, very close to uh, one of our high, highest grade holes previously, hole three, Again, not surprisingly, it was a short distance, maybe 10 to 25 meters. Um, but basically, you know, that had 3.4 grams or 53 meters. Again, uh, the highest grade gold uh, being uh, at, at the, you know, basal portion of that oxide zone and within the transition zone. And then within that, you can see some, you know, a couple of nice higher grade zones, 7.2 uh, gram, grams over 6.3 meters and eight grams over about four and a half meters. So, you know, re really um, nice gold numbers. Um, based on some early petrography work we've done, it appears the gold is basically hosted within the matrix. One, one of the other interesting things to note about hole 12 this year is that we expanded the, uh, the breccia to the south by about another 50 meters. Um, that's kind of indicated in that kind of like wedge in the lower uh, uh, left, left hand corner there. So, you know, the, the zone remains open, a long strike, particularly to the east. Um, I, I, again, most of our, our drilling this year was within a fairly confined area, but, you know, we, we certainly think there's potential to extend the zone, um, uh, to the east. Overall, the breach is around 500 meters uh, long based on what we know. And, uh, I think, you know, we've, we've 
uh, basically identified gold mineralization about half of that strike length. So uh, we'll continue to, to try to, uh, to work and expand that. Um, so this is just a couple of cross sections. The, the one on the left basically shows um, the rab hole one that had the uh, uh, what, one gram over about 24 meters. And then hole three from uh, 2021, which was a very nice hole, three and a half grams over 50 meters. So again, you can see it's within that pink unit, the breccia unit. And uh, you, you'll also see the sort of sub-horizontal is sort of sub-paralleling the sur surface of uh, the oxide domain, sulfide domain. Uh, so like I said, there does seem to be a correlation between the gold mineralization and that oxide uh, uh, sulfide domain. Um, the map on the right shows uh, results for hole 13 this year. Uh, again, you know, this was a hole, uh, basically, the, it, we, we drilled it to 503 meters, um, basically looking for that buried porphyry. So it, it did it did basically drill, uh, you know, right, right down that breccia unit. Again, though, with the working idea uh, or model that basically this thing is under, underlaid by a porphyry. So again, you know, good grades, 3.4 grams over 53 meters. So, you know, as long as we're in that oxidized breccia, we're pretty confident we're going to continue to get some good, good gold numbers. Uh, next, please. Yeah, so this is the drill core photo from hole three from, uh, from 2021. And you can see, you know, the grades are annotated there, but, you know, really consistent grades, I guess, is, is how you would describe this. Um, and, uh, you know, when, you, when you're in the mineralized zone, um, you, you consistently get good grade. Um, when you're out of it, the, 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 the transition, um, it's, fairly, it's fairly sharp within, you know, several meters, and then, and then you're out of it. So, but anyway, like I said, you know, we're getting grades anywhere from maybe a gram and a half to three and a half grams over about 15 meters. So that's, that's quite good. Can you get some leapfrog? Hey, sorry, yeah, my uh, internet was showing I was offline. Yes, I will. Uh, let's pull up here on the screen share, and we'll. Uh, it was an excellent introduction on uh, an overview on on Betty Ford. So you can see my screen again. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So we'll start off similar to what I did with the white property, and we'll just take a look at um, really the gold and soil contours and where uh, Betty Ford and other targets sit. So. As Terry is saying, really the Betty property is bisected by the Coffee Creek Fault. And when you look at LIDAR, this is so you can see this structure coming through here. Uh, that's the northern portion of the Coffee Creek Fault. And you can see coming off that are these, uh, these splays, and these are all kind of gold mineralized, second order, third order splays off the Coffee Creek Fault. You have one here, another one coming down there and then uh, carrying on and this is uh, separate this is our um, our mascot target down to the southeast but within that splay we have now this is our the betty ford target and then carrying on over east to our grable and then down this off to the north uh, just down the ridge is our betty white target so again golden soils doing an excellent job for us really helping to highlight where these uh, targets are um, so we can see is, is Betty Ford right in the center. What I'm showing is our polylithic breccia. Uh, the red is our current understanding of the polylithic breccia. And then this blue trace here, as there is mentioned, this is our, our previous interpretation. You can see just from drilling this year, we've really expanded uh, that polylithic breccia to the south. And that was largely um, a result of of our drilling where we're looking for a feeder structure and i'm just going to look in cross section and bear with me we're just going to we're going to slice this down a little bit if we're going to look at uh this is our we're looking at vlf so a geophysical um target you can see it's nice right along this contact of our the vlf high and the low if we look at our historic drilling you get the strong correlation of our gold grades appearing to occur right on the uh, this kind of boundary here. So one of the interpretations uh, was that this could represent a feeder structure for bringing the gold mineralization up into the porphyry or into our polylithic breccia. So our first all the season was drill testing this contact and seeing what might uh, might be there. Um, 
this contact uh, was real and present. It looks like there's a dike sitting on that contact. So we didn't, uh, while we didn't see that necessarily as being a gold feeder structure, I'm just... Lost again. Am I back here? Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. We're uh, the joys of uh, sometimes having being so reliant on internet. Uh, but here we have again this third sulfide uh, mineralization. Uh, first time we've actually intersected um, a contiguous zone of more than one assay in the uh, sulfide domain. So 1.2 grams over eight meters. Really exciting, and that we're actually seeing. That gold mineralization now at depth as well. So hopefully in future drilling, uh, we can start to find an ore shoot, uh, you know, a trend of gold at depth that we can start to chase this thing at depth as well. Uh, because you can see, you know, if we look in, um, we look down the side of this here, it's a uh, you know large, large depth extent to this polylithic breccia. Um, we've got a really good handle on the orientation of it, you know, where it sits. So if we can start finding a feeder structure, a lot of opportunity to build a lot of ounces quite quickly within this breach unit itself. And as Terry mentioned right now, you know, the, the lion's share of our, our grades that we're seeing sit within the oxide and transitional domain. So part of our focus too will be really looking at expanding this long strike. This is our current uh, understanding of the strike here still remains open on strike and part of our drilling as well too it looks like when we look at our drill core there's another breccia that we've noticed in our drill core um, it was intersected fairly far down in, in hole number two from drilling in 2021 but there could be another might be perhaps a bit narrower but another is potential for another polylithic breccia just sitting off off to the north and that would correlate to this portion of the soil geochemistry as well so quite a lot to still continue looking at, a lot of additional potential at Betty Ford. Uh, quite excited to get back there and continue drilling. Uh, this is you know, the ridge that, um, we'll look, I'll angle it down a bit, that Betty Ford is sitting on. And just down the ridge from there is our Betty White target as well. Uh, only seen just initial really rab drilling and a few diamond drill holes. Largely, this uh, anomaly remains uh, unexplained and a lot of potential there as well, too. So. Um, just between these two targets alone, really excited to start seeing what we can start building there and then continuing to look along strike over to Grable and then in our broader picture as well with the, between mascot and all our un other untested uh, targets. So Betty to us is, is really quite an exciting target. And as David mentioned as well, we're so close to casino, uh, to coffee as well large deposits in the area and and really we're just starting to scratch the surface of what we have here so lots of uh lots of excitement yet to come uh from betty ford and, and our betty property and i'm going to hand it back over to you there terry yeah thanks cam that was good yeah, yeah just, just just to cam's last point is you know it's all well and good to find this stuff but eventually we as a company want to see that it has the possibility to be monetized and the fact that you have the second largest gold company in the world permitting a mine on uh, one side of your property and then Western Copper with the largest mining company in the world uh, partnership with Rio just to the south of the property you know I think it's really indicative of the kind of uh, perspective and opportunity that people see in the area that uh, resource gateway project the road's going to come right over that property you know and into those other two properties potentially so that you know that that's phenomenal for access in the future and on the topic of the road there's also another roadway that is being contemplated from dawson to the coffee deposit itself um, that's a partnership between you know various different parties in the area and, and they're they're working towards that so these types of uh evolution within a district are game changers uh you know, clearly we already have very substantial discoveries but you know to the extent that you can continue to prove access you know now you don't necessarily need to make it Two million ounce discovery. You make a five hundred thousand ounce discovery, and then it becomes, uh, you know, like any camp it is. You, you'll have a couple of uh, facilities in, in the area, and you you truck your your kind of localized ore bodies to those. 
Uh, and, and this is where we see things happening. The, the area had been quiet for the last six or seven years, but it's, you know, the Yukon's really sort of started to pick up an activity, which was phenomenal. A number of the other uh, companies in the district have announced larger uh, resource updates as well. So really happy to see uh, the increase in interest and the increase in the speed, which things are evolving in, in, in the area. So this is everything you want to see for the evolution of a camp. And like I alluded to at the beginning, I really think you know this will become a world-class camp within Canada. And the opportunity here, it's, it's akin to, so if I had that, you know, if someone asks you, say, hey, would you like to, the opportunity to buy 70% of Val d'Or or Timmins or Nevada gold fields, uh, you know, 75 years ago, I'm sure everyone would have jumped on that. And I think this is where we are today in this uh, district, in this territory. So it's a very exciting time. And the ability to be making, you know, high grade three and a half plus gram discoveries uh, at surface with everything else going on that I just mentioned, that's, you know, a, a, true, a dream come true from our perspective. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Uh, Jerry, let's uh, try to have a quick look at some of these other projects. I think that might be the last Betty Ford slide. So here, here's Vertigo. Um, anyone who's followed the company knows that this was a project that had generated a lot of excitement back in 2018 and 2019. Um, we hadn't done anything with it for a while. In the off season last year, we did a new structural interpretation and sort of came away thinking that a lot of the previous drilling didn't really adequately test. Um, we, we saw at least three different vein sets, basically. And, and so we thought there might be some potential for bulk tonnage type gold. So we, we did a program there this year, kind of, uh, you could say, vertical revisited. Um, you know, our best hole from that program was hole 52. Uh, we came away with 1.4 grams over about 58 meters. Um, you know, uh, in looking at the core, we did a detailed review of the core late in the season. Uh, there's some really nice breaches zones with uh, pyrite, arsenopyrite, uh, both uh, hydrothermal breaches and crackle breaches, and sort of a major fault kind of marking the base of that zone within that hole. So we, we really do, you know, we were encouraged by that hole, um, but it, it is a structurally complex area. So what we'll do in the off season this year just go back, uh, look look at all the information, including you know data from this year's drilling, as well as as previous drilling, just to see if we're able to better vector, um, you know, some of our future drilling. And then again, this is a, a structural interpretation done by uh, Matias Sanchez uh, for the vertical. So, you know, it, it is in a good structural setting, um, and uh, it's still you know it's still one of our uh, better targets on, not sp especially on the JP Ross property. Uh, next, please. Yeah, so, the, you know, we did some trenching there back in 2019. And, you know, that's a, there's some nice VG within those samples. So you can see in the hand sample there on the, on the left, uh, you know, some of the higher grade, 100 and about 140 grams per ton. So, you know, it, the, the, the vertigo is not the issue of the grade. It's, it's basically the interpretation and the continuity. So, um, anyway, we were encouraged by this year's results, and we'll we'll take that back in the off season and uh, see where we go from here. Um, this is the Nolan. Um, this is basically we're about seventy five meters west of Dawson City, out towards the Alaska border, just south of the top of the World Highway. Um, so the, the aeromagnetic map on the left uh, shows the sixty mile peak of fault. Uh, the property as a whole has a number of different uh, geochemical targets. The Mount Hart in the south is quite large. Uh, then we have the Boucher in the central part. And, and the Cali is the one that we drilled this year. It's basically right on that 60-mile peak of fault. And it's also in a prolific uh, placer gold-producing area um, in the 60-mile area. So anyway, that's that was the first diamond drilling. This was our maiden diamond drilling for this one. Um, Go to the next slide. Yeah, so so basically what we did, we, you know, this was really a first pass. You can see the, the geochemical anomaly is about, uh, you know, a minimum of two kilometers long and uh, had never seen a diamond drill hole. So we put basically three widely spaced holes but just to get a first look at it. So we tested roughly about a kilometer of strike length. 
Um, we don't have any of those assay results back yet, but we expect to, you know, within the next probably three or four weeks. So um, anyway, that was uh, that was one of those uh, targets that was begging to be drilled. So uh, that's what we did this year on the Capelli. Um, th this is the, the next two slides basically just touch on these uh, porphyry targets in the southern part of our land package. If you look at the map on the on the left here, you can see where Casino is. Um, if you look further east, you can see some of the other porphyry tar you know, uh, deposits and targets. So Hayes and Peddler, um, they're both really early stage targets. Uh, this particular one, the map on the uh, the right shows the Hayes geochemical anomaly. So we have a, a really nice bismuth core, um, and then that's kind of haloed by uh, silver, lead. Uh, it, it's associated, we know, from government mapping, the Yukon Geological Survey, uh, prospect, Lake Cretaceous uh, Prospect for Mountain Sweet. So it, it's got the right geology, the right geochemistry. Um, and if we go to the next one for the peddler, this is our Bridget target. Uh, this this one's been known for decades. It's a very large uh, a molybdenum uh, anomaly primarily. But you can see, if you look in the lower right, you can see a nice bismuth uh, core as well. Uh, some copper. Um, so what we did this year, we ran some uh, preliminary IP resistivity lines over both of these targets. You know, essentially, we know we got the right geology, the right geochemistry, just trying to get a geophysical signature for what's going on in the subsurface. So uh, we're kind of waiting uh, to get uh, th that report back uh, on the results. But uh, anyway, we're encouraged by both, both of those targets. I mean, they're quite large uh, in the order of kilometers. So it's a bit different, I guess, from most of our goal-focused exploration. But again, in, in, in the world of critical metals, uh, molybdenum, copper uh, are, are probably uh, not a bad place to be. So we're quite excited about those ones as well. Yeah. And that's kind of it. Yeah, and I would just add, you know, th th those two targets there are another example of the value of owning a district like we do. Uh, the Yukon is incredibly uh, rich as it comes to mineralization potential. And yes, our focus is gold and has been gold, but we continue to come across occurrences of these different uh, types of mineralization and you know with uh the casino copper gold porphyry you know, <laughs> right uh, sort of basically adjacent to this i think it would make a lot of sense for us to do some more work on this to to, to, to continue to advance it forward and you know we're seeing a lot of these types of uh potentials and some of our other properties as well you know as people who do follow the yukon you know they continue to see different zinc projects advance etc so the um the opportunities uh, are nothing, no stone goes un unturned and we'll continue to uh, invest and advance these projects as we feel they make sense what, based on the exploration work con conducted. All right, perfect, thanks for that. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut to a couple of the questions here. Uh, we're a bit short on time, so the questions that are not answered uh, will be answered uh, by a follow-up from the white coat team. So let's get right into it. Um, so first of all, can you tell me what is the potential to extend mineralization further at both the Betty and Vertigo? Asks uh, PT Harris here. Yeah, I'll take that one. I think uh, the potential for Betty Ford uh, would be primarily a long strike to the east. We, we've done some drilling uh, out in that area, but uh, again, you know, most of that drilling is intersecting the breach at a, at a deeper level. Um, so what we're what we've been talking about doing next year is to drill some, you know, short shallow holes off to the east, basically trying to find that oxidized or trace it a long strike. Um, and again, you know, until. 2021, we really didn't know that breccia existed. It's a newly identified unit. Um, there could be other lookalikes on the Betty property elsewhere. So, um, you know, we'll be looking at that potential as well. Uh, vertigo is a more complex structurally, I would say. We, we really do need to go back and look and see how this year's drilling sort of fits in with, you know, the drilling in the, in the past and what our interpretation was. But 
you know, it, the, the grades are there at Vertigo. Um, I think it's just a matter of understanding structure a bit better and seeing if we can establish that continuity that really you need in order to, to build up ounces, basically. And just one thing that, you know, was very interesting to me this year, going back to the Betty, uh, this year was the first year we drilled from south to north. And I think that's uh, given us some new information about the, uh, the, the, the north-south dimensions of, the, of that Brecher unit. I think we could see potential for it to continue growing. And, you know, we're learning a lot more from that directional drilling. And also with the um, uh, intersection of gold now at further depths, don't forget, you know, we are continuing to trace the source of this gold mineralization. The grades are so high up to surface. So if we can tap into that, as Cam mentioned, when we went through the modeling, I think that could provide an opportunity for a tremendous amount of growth uh, at the Betty itself. And then again, don't forget the Betty 4 is one of several different targets on the Betty property itself. We did some drilling at the mascot last year. The mascot has uh, you know, incredibly high grades, up to you know, 20 plus grams uh, of, of gold, uh, and along with other uh, mineralization as well. So it's just, you know, we're continuing to, to learn a lot. Um, each target has its own unique uh, potential profile. So uh, there's a Betty Ford itself, then there's these other new targets with, with you know, very significant soil anomalies on them, which certainly warrant uh, drill testing as well. Yeah, perfect, thank you. And uh, these next two questions are tied for the most upvotes. So uh, what are the uh, future exploration plans for this year and next year? So right now uh, we are, We've done. We've had a very active uh, 2023 program. So I think before we can plan on next year, we're going to be spending the next several months and throughout the winter uh, interpreting the data that we receive. The data is starting to come in now and will continue to come in over the next several months, which leads to news and press releases. So this is typically our busiest uh, news time of the year. So please do stay tuned over the next several months and into the new year as we continue to put out updates from from all this good work. Based on you know what we see, that will lead us to to develop our plan for next year. You know the process we typically will update our partners, uh, Nico Kinross, uh, you know as to what we found, and you know how, and they've been great partners for helping us sort of identify you know where we should think to continue to and best ways to add value to the company. Uh, I would suppose that the Betty Ford will certainly uh, and the Betty property itself command a lot more work. We continue to hit these exceptional grades there. Uh, depending what comes from some of these other results, it's uh, certainly, um, you know, we're, we're very excited to see what comes of that because that'll, you know, uh, you know definitely warrant more um, follow-up work, work as well. Perfect. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. Uh, and uh, finally, do you plan on increasing the number of drills and meters drilled to speed up exploration uh, as you have such a large land package? That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, this this is always sort of a bit of a balance. You know, this year our program was designed to be very impactful. The last couple of years were smaller than uh, typical exploration programs. Uh, you know, we, we did have several drills turning on those years. Uh, you know, those with COVID and whatever, we thought it better to be conservative, keep our camp sizes small. With the seasonality, the last thing we wanted to do was to have, you know, a timeout period. But, uh, you know, to the extent that, uh, you know, we, well, we certainly have the work to do to the extent that it's, uh, it's feasible, absolutely, right? That, you know, this, this exploration, the way you drive value is by doing the work. And the more work we can do, the better, uh, and, which also leads to different opportunities of how we can, you know, continue to advance and, and invest in our portfolio directly with our partners and, and other people, et cetera. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. And uh, we still had about three or four questions, but we're uh, out of time. So do not worry, everyone. We will get to those uh, after the event uh, and reach out to you individually. Um, so thank you all for taking us through these updates and the Q&A session. Uh, I want to thank everyone who submitted questions. Uh, and as always, today's recording will be available to watch on demand in the coming days. So feel free to look out for that. Uh, and before we wrap up, uh, just passing things back over to you, gentlemen, for any closing remarks you'd like to make. Yeah, we'd really like to thank everyone for uh, their interest today. We, we, we're very fortunate to work in an incredibly blessed geologic environment. Uh, we, you know, we're 
also very fortunate to have great partners between the different government uh, bodies that we work with up there. And, you know, it's really a priority of ours to ensure that all stakeholders are included in this process and we, we advance these projects with everyone's best interest in mind. We didn't really get a chance to touch on it too much. The ESG profile of this company is uh, exceptional. Our methodologies have been uh, developed, you know, to, to minimize footprints you know, of all the work that we've done. So this is all stuff that's uh, top of mind as well. Personally, I you know I think that the the, the the level of activity in the Yukon is, is increasing more so in the last year or so than we've seen in the last several. That's uh, I think going to help uh, bolster and continue to advance the development of this camp. I really do believe we're at the very early days of a major uh, new gold rush or metals rush in this district, and uh, this will evolve into one of Canada's most prolific camps. And we're in a, a very fortunate position to have such a tremendously large land package. We have the fine resources, we have the know-how, we've made the investments, and I think we've really cracked the code up here and we're just literally scratching the surface and our uh, most exciting days are ahead of us. Well, thanks again, everyone, for participating, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.